Coming up on Mountain News at 6, a former Letcher County teacher charged with rape is in court seeking to get a reduction in his bond. And the Center for Rural Development and the Kentucky Office of Broadband hosts a meeting for those wanting to learn more about high-speed internet in Clay County. Plus, we are dry through Friday, but moisture is back for Easter weekend. Those details coming up as Mountain News at 6 starts now. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 6. Brian Wesley Bailey, a former Letcher County teacher charged with rape, was in court again today for a bond hearing. WYMT's Chandler Wilcox was there and tells us what happened. Right here in my heart. Brian Wesley Bailey was back in the Letcher County Circuit courtroom. Just read it off. This time, the defense and prosecution discussed his bond, which is currently set at $250,000. Your Honor, this is a uh, motion to reduce my client's bond based on two Bailey's attorney, John Combs, argued for a bond reduction. Combs said they should reduce it to a property bond and allow Bailey to be incarcerated at home. My client is, is a very well respected. Combs argued Bailey is a quote, well respected member of the community in Harlan County, end quote. Combs also added Bailey has no criminal history. In this case, the Commonwealth agrees the court's bond is appropriate in this case. Nick Whitaker with the Commonwealth's Attorney's Office argued against the bond reduction, saying it would, quote, depreciate the seriousness of the allegations, end quote. He also added social media allows people to contact anyone from anywhere. In this jurisdiction alone, in the recent years, people have been released under home incarceration on sexual offenses and have attempted to reach out to the minor children. Judge James Kraft said he would review the bond. Whitaker asked if it is reduced that the property be appraised first. In Letcher County, Chandler Wilcox, WYMT Mountain News. The next court date for Brian Wesley Bailey has not yet been set. A Floyd County man is in jail after police say he uploaded sexual images of kids on social media. KSP's Electronic Crimes Branch launched an investigation and later interviewed Matthew Williams. Detectives searched Williams' home yesterday. He faces multiple charges that are Class C and Class D felonies which are punishable by anywhere from one to 10 years in prison. Williams was taken to the Floyd County Detention Center. A Lawrence County man is facing charges after police were called out to a home about a reported stabbing. The incident happened last weekend at a home in Louisa. According to an arrest citation, the altercation reportedly came about over a mom joke. In the citation, 51-year-old Matthew Savage pushed and cut the victim who was a minor with a knife. The victim was taken to Three Rivers Medical Center. Savage was taken to the Big Sandy Regional Detention Center. Two Pike County men are facing drug charges after an investigation in an armed robbery case. On March 14th, KSB noticed a vehicle that was stolen, which was pulled into a home in Floyd County. That's where Bradley Newsom and Joshua Henson were. And during the arrest of Newsom and Henson, police found digital scales along with suspected meth and suspected fentanyl. In addition to the drug charges, Hen Henson was also charged with receiving stolen property and running from police. The Wayne County, West Virginia Sheriff says a jury duty phone scam is circulating there. Sheriff Rick Thompson says the office has received reports of scam calls claiming someone missed jury duty and there's a warrant for their arrest. The caller reportedly requested a payment of $500 to clear the warrant. Thompson says the Sheriff's Department will never request personal or financial information or attempt to solicit payment on the phone for any reason. In Pulaski County, an electrical company is warning of a door-to-door -door scam. They say people are knocking on doors at homes that use South Kentucky RECC for electricity. The scammers use the excuse of discussing electric meters and solar energy but South Kentucky RECC says they have no connection to the company.
Well, no complaints in the weather office on this Wednesday. We are tracking some dry weather, also some mild conditions. A live look from Pulaski County and downtown Somerset. That current temperature is sitting at 57 degrees. This is actually one of the cooler spots on this Wednesday. Most of us in the middle to lower 60s up to 64 in Manchester, 62 for Pikeville and 63 for Middlesbrough. Also over in Jonesville, Virginia at this hour. So we are tracking some more mild weather as we go into this evening. Up on first alert pinpoint Doppler. All thanks to high pressure, we are tracking a clean sweep and that weather system will bring some more dry weather as we go into this evening. Also tonight and thanks to a clear sky, those lows are chilly as you wake up on Thursday. Most of us in the middle 30s, possibly some lower 30s. And maybe a few areas of patchy frost as you wake up on Thursday. But for most of us, no big issues as you wake up and walk out the door. More dry weather is on tap tomorrow, also on Good Friday. But we are tracking some more moisture, also some more mild conditions by Easter weekend. Also pushing into early next week. More details on those rain chances coming up in just a little bit. Steve. All right, thank you, Cameron. Governor Andy Bashir visited Floyd County today, celebrating the grand opening of a new addiction recovery housing space in Martin. WYMT's Buddy Forbes has more about the mission. When it comes to addiction, it arose in our lifetime. We should not leave it to our children. It has taken so many lives. Frontier Behavioral Health is working to keep pushing Kentucky's recovery efforts forward. They're not numbers. They're people. They're somebody's son, somebody's daughter, somebody's husband or wife. Bringing a new facility to the Martin community to provide 16 beds for men in recovery. This is a part of what we've been trying to do all over Kentucky, and that's to ensure no matter where you are, no matter when it is, that if you're ready for treatment, that there is a bed ready for you that day. That's what everyone deserves. Housing, counseling, and caring for people like Logan Rose, while connecting them with the resources to make the most of their second chances. If I'm being honest, uh, I don't know where my life would be at today if it wasn't for this program. With partners like Big Sandy Community and Technical College, eCami, and more, stepping up to reintegrate the recovering. And I've been a teacher for 30 years and I've never had a class more dedicated in my life. Showing them the opportunities that lie beyond the opioids and obstacles. After I was finished with the program, um, they helped me get enrolled in college and start a welding course at Big Sandy Community and Technical College. Celebrating the opening of the new facility Wednesday, saying it is a step toward a better tomorrow. Our job is just to set them on the right path. Is not just that addiction treatment and goodbye. We want to build their life. We want to build their life after they graduate. With plans to keep partnering, planting, and providing. In Floyd County, Buddy Forbes, WYMT Mountain News. The men's facility already has plans to expand its offerings into a building next door, and a new women's treatment facility is planned to open in Pike County this summer. Now, Governor Bashir was also scheduled to visit Sayersville this afternoon for the opening of the McGoffin County Career and Technical Center. Through the Chemical Stockpile Emergency Preparedness Program, FEMA and the U.S. Army have been assisting communities in Madison County. It was created to protect the public in the areas where the nation's stockpile of chemical warfare agents and munitions are, such as the Bluegrass Army Depot. But with the last of the stockpile being destroyed, Local agencies are looking for ways to keep the funding that's been there for years. Richmond Police Chief Rodney Richardson says that funding has helped in many ways. We've had that benefit, and uh, in order to respond to emergencies that might happen, natural disasters or any other thing that might happen in the county, um, we have to maintain that radio system. The foundation's there. It's been purchased and it's been bought. We just have to maintain it now. Richardson added the CSEP funding is suspected to end next year. In 2022, Governor Andy Bashir's administration established the Kentucky Broadband Office. Today in Clay County, officials from that office, along with the Center for Rural Development, spoke to Clay Countyans about improvements on the horizon. WYMT's Madison Carmouche attended that listening session and has more. The Center for Rural Development serves 45 counties in South and East Kentucky with a common priority for them all. 
connectivity. Broadband has become, uh, I mean, it's so, so critical in just about every phase of our life anymore. Mm -hmm. And the Center for Rural Development is, is, our passion is making sure that everybody has connectivity to high-speed broadband. The goal of the meeting was to help folks understand the tools in place that can improve service speeds in Clay County. For example, one of them is a speed test where you can actually go to your location, you can get online if you have access, and uh, it'll tell you what the actual speeds are that are available at that location. Officials with the center say this point of the process is all about collecting data and finding what the solutions could be for the region. So it lets us map where those holes are, where the, the challenges are in getting coverage to, and then we start putting together a plan, whether it's through funding or other maps of how we're going to address where those uh, holes are. Lawson says that he hopes people in Clay County continue showing up and advocating for themselves. Raising the awareness of uh, the challenges that are out there, and there's lots and lots of funding that's available to make this happen, but we still have to be strategic about it if we're going to get everybody covered. But community members say they are tired of broken promises when it comes to accessibility to broadband. In Clay County, Madison Carmouche, WYMT Mountain News. Lawson says there will be more public listening sessions in more of the counties they service throughout the year. For more information, you can find this story on our website. We now know the funeral arrangements for a longtime firefighter that served in Pike County. Robert Lindsay died on Tuesday at the Pikeville Medical Center. His visitation will be tomorrow beginning at 7 p.m. at J.W. Collins' Son Funeral Home in Pikeville. The visitation will continue Friday at 9 a.m. His funeral is set for Saturday at noon, which will also be at J.W. Collins' Son as well. Lindsay was 60 years old. We stay cool and calm as we go into tonight, but some 70s are on the way for your holiday weekend. Those details after this break. Plus, there are just a few days left in the 2024 legislative session in Frankfurt. We'll take a look at where some bills stand. 